I think everyone knows that their gut has a microbiome. And for the past 10 years, we've always talked about how you can change your diet, probiotics, prebiotics for the gut microbiome. But what a lot of people don't understand is that the oral microbiome is the second largest and most diverse microbiome after the gut. It's also a lot easier to change. And actually it's been shown to have a massive impact on general health. Having an imbalanced oral microbiome increases your risk of oral diseases like gum disease and decay, but also can increase your risk of other systemic diseases like high blood pressure, heart disease, infertility, fertility, Alzheimer's, and it's something that is so easy to manage and balance. The World Health Organization has come out um, saying that 3.5 billion people have some sort of oral disease. They've also found that 10% of our world population are suffering from severe gum disease, which makes gum disease one of the most prevalent inflammatory conditions um, in the whole body. We now understand that more than 90% of diseases can be traced back to an imbalanced microbiome. In the last few years, we've actually been able to show that there is a strong connection and causation between the oral microbiome and general diseases. Whereas prior to maybe five years ago, there was a lot of kind of, is this correlation? Is it just that, okay, there's the same risk factors with gum disease and with heart disease, for example, smoking. And now we're actually seeing that, no, it's not just correlation. There is strong causation between the two. If you um, have heart surgery, you can't actually have a hygiene for about six months after the heart surgery. And the reason for that is because you're at a very high res risk of something called infective endocarditis. So this is oral bacteria which travels down to a faulty heart valve um, and can actually cause death. Um, so we know that, but we never really look at it for other diseases or other problems. So then I realized that actually it's not just bacteria that causes disease or problems, it's how your body responds to that bacteria and the strains of bacteria that you have as well. So for every bacteria, um, there'll be multiple strains and some of those strains can be really aggressive and really horrible for your mouth and other strains are completely fine and are not gonna cause you any problems. So when I developed my test, what we did is we looked at strains. So we looked at the strains of certain bacteria um, and we would be able to differentiate between patients who had the really bad strains and the really good strains. But then also we looked at the ratio of good and bad bacteria in someone's mouth, so their diversity, as well as their genetic mutations and also their inflammation. So when you put all of it together and you, it's like a puzzle piece, then you can actually have a better insight into someone's oral health. So I guess my answer is that everyone's oral microbiome is a little bit different, but it's also how your body responds to that microbiome and bacteria that really dictates whether or not you're going to have disease or problems. And okay. I see it every day and we have a lot of patients who suffer from terrible gum disease and they come to me and they brush three times a day. They've never touched a cigarette. They have immaculate oral hygiene. They eat very well, but they have terrible gum disease. And for those patients, they might have genetic mutations that predispose them to gum disease and to inflammation. So even the smallest amount of bacteria, their body responds in a very aggressive and inflammatory, destructive way, which can cause disease. What's interesting or different between the oral and gut microbiome. The oral microbiome, if someone doesn't go in there and mechanically disrupt the bacteria and the plaque in your mouth, then that bacteria can stay forever. So the gut, what happens is you've got something called peristalsis, you've got movement. So the bacteria moves, it, it changes, it regenerates, there's turnover. In the mouth, so the teeth are the only non-shedding surfaces in the whole body. So that- Non-shedding surfaces. So imagine if you, if you never had a shower in, in your life, uh, you would still self-wash because the skin cells would shed. Mm. But if you never brushed your teeth, then your teeth are not shedding. They're gonna stay like that. So that bacteria will just keep on growing and growing and growing and growing, and you'll get this really thick plaque. So that's why actually the oral microbiome, you need to mechanically remove that bacteria. And that's why brushing your teeth is super important or um, using the correct toothpaste or et cetera, or going and seeing your hygienist because you need to mechanically remove that bacteria quite regularly. I have so many patients who say, oh, you know, my gums bleed, but that's normal. If your eye bled or if your foot was bleeding every day, you would be worried and you would think actually there's inflammation here, there's a problem here. But so many people have bleeding gums and they don't understand that bleeding gums is a sign. It's your gum screaming to you saying that I have inflammation and that inflammation can travel. And then the third mechanism as well, so there's one more, is um, 
it's damage to your blood vessels. So again, the same bad bacteria in your mouth, it releases these enzymes, these toxic enzymes, and they can travel through the rest of your body, through your blood vessels, and they can actually damage your blood vessels. So these blood vessels are not able to dilate and constrict as well as they used to. Yeah. So there's a really strong um, bi-directional relationship between rheumatoid arthritis and gum disease. So that means that if you have really bad rheumatoid arthritis, you will have pretty bad gum disease. And if you treat your rheumatoid arthritis, your gum disease will get better. And vice versa, if you have, if you treat the gum disease, your rheumatoid arthritis will get better. And that was actually one of the um, first patients that really got me on my journey of the mouth body connection. So like, yeah, I was doing the saliva testing. I got it. You know, I was like, okay, cool. We are quantifying oral health. We're tracking things. But even me, I wasn't really fully sold on this whole mouth body connection, how our mouth is connected to the rest of the body. So I had a patient who was sent to me by um, her functional medicine practitioner. And she had been seen by uh, four or five different practitioners. She had terrible rheumatoid arthritis. And she um, went to this final guy and he was the first guy to ever ask her, have you ever had your teeth checked? What's happened? And she said, oh, I've had a few teeth taken out in the last year or two, about six teeth. But you know, it's just, it, it is what it is. And he was like, I, I don't think that's normal. So he sent her to me and he was like, can you do your saliva stuff that you do and see if there's anything up going on there? And we did do a saliva test. We saw that she had super high levels of inflammation, of collagen breakdown, um, high levels of bad bacteria. And what was the most important was that when I treated her gum disease, she had terrible gum disease, and that's why she was losing her teeth. When I treated the gum disease properly and aggressively, um, yes, her gums healed, but more importantly, her rheumatoid arthritis got better to the point where she was actually able to get off steroids and medication and be able to walk again. So um, the research has shown that if you have gum disease, you are at a 20% higher chance of high blood pressure. Um, but also they are now saying that up to 30 to 40% of cardiac um, issues in hospital can be traced back to an oral bacteria um, causing problems in the heart valve. Um, so the reason for this connection, so yes, inflammation, but also going back to that third mechanism I told you, which was about the vasoconstriction. So the blood vessels constricting and dilating. So these toxic enzymes, which are being released by the bacteria, they travel through the blood um, and they basically stop the blood vessels from being able to widen and lots of blood to travel to the heart and also to constrict. And that also is um, one of the biggest connections with uh, heart disease. And then at the very end of the spectrum is people who are losing their teeth having really terrible gum infections and all of these kind of mouth body connections that we're talking about. It's strange is that green tea, um, you know, something so simple is extremely effective at killing Fusobacterium nucleatum. So it's just knowing those types of things, being able to do the test, knowing the right treatment plans and recommendations based from that. We know green tea is good for us and now we can really understand why. Um, it helps with what we call oxidative stress. So this is um, basically stress for the body um, and it's antibacterial. So it actually is very effective at killing Fusobacterium nucleatum. What is your opinion of the impact that coffee has on my oral microbiome? I'm slightly biased because I love coffee. Okay. Um, but there is no negative impact of coffee on the oral microbiome directly. Um, coffee does dry your mouth out. Um, and so you have reduced saliva and that can actually cause problems for the oral microbiome. So the saliva is super important in your mouth. It provides all of the food, the proteins, everything for the bacteria in your mouth. So it's kind of like this delivery service, your delivery, it's traveling around, providing all of the food and bacteria, um, sorry, food to the bacteria. And that's what keeps the good bacteria alive and happy. So when you have a dry mouth, let's say you're drinking lots of coffee or you're very nervous or you are on antidepressants, for example, um, which are a big one, then you just don't have as much saliva. So you, those bacteria don't have as much food and those bacteria die and then you get bad bacteria growing in replacement. Uh, another thing with sugar is, um, I have a sweet tooth, I love sugar, but it's about how you eat your sugar. So let's say if you have your hot tea with five lumps of sugar in there and you're sipping it over an hour or two, that's where you start to see a lot of problems. So actually you need to be having a sugar attack. So just all the sugar in one go. 
And that way your mouth has all the sugar in one go and it's able to neutralize the saliva and get back to a good state as quickly as possible. Every time you sip your, your tea with sugar, what happens is that the saliva has to go from acidic back to neutral, acidic back to neutral, acidic, and then it starts to just not work properly and the saliva just stays acidic. And that's where you start to see decay. Down the tea, or I don't know if you're a M&M guy, have all your M&Ms in one go. Don't snack on M&Ms every 10 minutes. So again, there's been a lot of research. Um, I think it's difficult for something like mental health and um, and gum disease, which, you know, with the chicken and the egg, which one came first? Um, because oh. One of the issues is if you have a decline in your mental health, you are less likely to take care of your oral health mm -hmm. um, and therefore that can exacerbate issues. So there has been a lot of research to show that, you know, uh, there's a correlation between mm -hmm. poor mental health and poor oral health. But in my personal opinion, that causative connection is not there yet. Um, there's also been some research with things like schizophrenia, but again, it's the jury's still out in my opinion. We look at an enzyme called AMMP8, and this enzyme is responsible for breaking down that specific collagen. Um, so we test the collagen, that enzyme all the time with our patients. It's a really nice way of knowing like um, whether or not someone is about to have gum disease, um, how much collagen breakdown is happening from a biomolecular level. So I had a woman, very healthy, always been fine, um, and then she had her collagen breakdown tested and her levels were through the roof. Her gums looked fine. She didn't look like she had any problems, but I've never seen such a high level in my life. And so, you know, I'm trying to think of what could be causing it, all of that. And she had lost her baby a couple of days before. And that type of intense stress on someone's body can have so many effects and impacts on the rest of your body. Um, and that was one of them. When we retested her six months later, she was back to normal again. But you can see even your mouth, you know, stress can really impact you. We've created this algorithm that predicts your risk of certain um, issues or diseases in the mouth. So those are things like bad breath, mm -hmm. gum disease, um, decay, and general inflammation. So a lot of people don't actually know how to brush their teeth, number one. Number two, we often don't brush for as long as we think that we are. So we're meant to brush for two minutes. The average is 20 to 30 seconds. Um, and we think that we're brushing for two minutes, but we're not. So with an electric toothbrush, it times you. And then also a pressure sensor. So the electric toothbrush often will have a pressure sensor, which will show you whether or not you're brushing too hard or you're brushing at the right pressure. And that will reduce your chance of recession. So I would say the area that people usually um, struggle with the most is the insides of their very back bottom teeth. What a lot of people will do is they'll kind of, they'll go on the inside and they brush their teeth like this, okay? Whereas actually you wanna get your elbow up and you wanna brush a lot more at like a 90 degree angle when you're getting there. It looks like you're brushing the gums a little bit. A though. little bit, yes. Yeah. So you actually do want to brush the gums a little bit. And then when we're on the outsides of the teeth, uh, we want to kind of brush at a 30 degree angle. So rotational movements and at a 30 degree angle. So not straight like a 90 degree, but kind of towards the gum margin. And by doing circular mo uh, movements, we're essentially kind of massaging the gums and getting rid of the bacteria from under the gum and then flicking it out. Okay. Yeah, so just like that. And then I always tell everyone it's really important to kind of have um, a method behind your toothbrushing. So don't go like brush and then go there and then up there and, you know, because you'll never brush properly. Um, so always start, let's say, on the left hand side, go do all the outsides and then do all the biting surfaces and then do all the insides and then do the same on the top teeth as well. And that model there, you've got another model in front of you, which is like a see through model. Yes. What does that show us? Um, so this is to show you um, what an implant looks like. A lot of people don't know what implants look like um, and how it looks like if it was within your jaw. Mm -hmm. Also what all the roots look like. And then also if you look on the other side, you can see um, this tooth which has the black within it. Yeah. Um, and it's got like a red bubble at the root of it. So this is a tooth that's had a root canal done to it and has an infection at the root of that tooth. So that's an abscess. Um, and a lot of people don't actually know what that looks like. Um, they only feel toothache, but this is what toothache is actually in their jaw. Our aim was to put the mouth back into the body, to explain to patients exactly what's going on in their mouth. And we can do that through microbiome testing, other saliva tests. Um, we look at your blood glucose levels, your vitamin D levels. We've got packages, we have an infrared sauna, we have a nutritionist. And the idea is that we're working all together because one of the 
issues I was seeing was that patients, they want to understand what's going on in their mouth and they want to optimize it, but they don't understand a lot of what dentistry is all about. We used to live in a world where the dentist would say, okay, you need two fillings and you've got gum disease and you're not brushing your teeth. And that was the end of it. And you would just listen to them and you get your work done. But now we are trying to essentially decode dentistry and explain it in a way that patients can understand. So I would say, I'm biased, but come over, come to the clinic. We can explain everything. Um, or you can do an oral microbiome test and you can actually understand yourself, what bacteria, what genetic mutations you have, what inflammation you have, what products you should start using. And then based on that, decide on what dentist you want to go to for any treatment if needed.